Hey everybody, today we're going to take a quick look at HBO Max the Movie, I mean Space Jam A New Legacy, directed by Malcolm D. Lee and starring LeBron James and Don Cheadle, along with various NBA and WNBA stars as themselves. Cheadle plays an evil algorithm that has kidnapped LeBron James and his son Dom and sucked them into the Warner Brothers serververse. And his name is Al G. Rhythm. Yeah. You know the sound Sideshow Bob makes when he steps on a rake? That was the sound I made the first time I heard Al G. Rhythm. And not only is it a terrible pun, but it doesn't make a whole lot of sense because he's clearly not an algorithm, he's an AI. Those are two completely different things, but the movie evidently does not know that. Or I suppose it's also possible that they did know, but someone at Warner Brothers was very proud of that algae rhythm pun, and they said, accuracy be damned, that will be in the movie. I'm sure I've mentioned this before, but this is one of my pet peeves, when movies use technical terms that they clearly do not understand. It bothers me probably more than it should. But anyway, Al has created Warner 3000, which is supposed to be this mind-blowing tech that will change the world. And what does this new mind-blowing tech do? Not a whole lot. Apparently, all it does is create cheap-looking CGI movies based on various Warner Brothers IP, but with one of the characters replaced with LeBron James. That's literally it. And in one of the very few actually realistic moments in the movie, LeBron James tells the people at Warner Brothers that this is the dumbest idea he's ever heard of. And it's actually kind of remarkable that the movie was able to admit that. This makes Al very angry indeed, and he sucks LeBron and his son into his digital world, and says LeBron can have his son back if he beats him at a game of basketball. But if he doesn't, he will be trapped in the serververse forever. Why? I really don't get what Al was actually trying to accomplish here. Like, why did he want LeBron stuck in the serververse for the rest of eternity? Like, okay, you have LeBron. Now what? Like, what are you planning to do? What is your end game here? And he also wants to wipe the Looney Tunes from existence. Again, why? What, what is the point of that? Are you just doing it out of spite? Except I don't think he is just doing it out of spite because the movie seems to be pretty convinced that he has a plan but it can't really articulate what that plan is. If he was just doing this all out of spite, it would still be kind of dumb, but at least it would make sense. I could understand it, but I don't think that's what they were going for. And the main reason Al wants Dom in his universe is because Dom is an amateur video game designer and he's using his game design skills to basically create his digital goon squad to go up against LeBron and the Toon Squad. And there's a bit of a conflict between LeBron and Dom because LeBron wants his son to work on his basketball skills, but Don wants to focus on coding because he's a much better coder than a basketball player. And it totally makes sense that that's what he would want to do because he's 12 and he has already made his own NBA Jam knockoff, which is remarkable. That's far more coding than I was capable of when I was 12. And the overall message here is about the importance of being yourself and letting other people be themselves, which is a good message, don't get me wrong, but the way this movie delivers that message is so ham-fisted. Granted, it might feel more ham-fisted than it actually is because LeBron James, in the spirit of Michael Jordan before him, is a really bad actor. And this is another moment where the movie is actually pretty honest about what it is, because there's a moment when LeBron James says, Athletes acting, it never goes well. You can't get him for false advertising. But really, none of that matters, because the movie's true purpose is to serve as a two-hour advertisement for HBO Max. The powers that be at Warner Brothers were like, we're gonna cram every single property we own into this movie by any means necessary. And by God, they succeeded. 
In fact, as soon as LeBron James gets to Looney Tunes world within the server verse, he discovers most of the tunes, except for Bugs Bunny, have left that world and gone on and infiltrated other WB properties. Daffy has become Superman, Elmer Fudd has become Mini-Me, uh, Wile E. Coyote and Roadrunner are in Mad Max Fury Road for some reason. It's, it, it's weird. And if that's not enough references for you, just wait until the actual basketball game starts, because as you may have seen in the trailer, virtually every Warner Brothers IP is represented in the audience at that game. And some of them are relatively harmless. You got the Flintstones, the Jetsons, Mystery Inc., uh, various incarnations of Batman villains. It was a little odd that different versions of the same villain were represented in the crowd, like you had two penguins, two Catwomans, it, that, that was an odd choice. But then you also had the Droogs and the White Walkers and the War Boys and Pennywise. And the whole time I'm watching this, I kept asking myself, who is this for? Like, who is actually the target audience here? Because it feels like this was primarily written to be a kid's movie. It's certainly way too dumb for most adults, but... At the same time, there are a lot of references here that are in no way appropriate for children. And there are also a lot of references that aren't necessarily inappropriate for children, but they're jokes that are going to go right over the kids' heads. I mean, how many kids today know who MC Hammer is? Or Captain Kirk? Or Bobby Knight? It seems like they're kind of trying to appeal to adults who might have fond memories of the original. Uh... I'm not sure why, because I've seen the original and it's not good, but if you got something out of it, more power to you. And then at the same time, they're also trying to appeal to kids who would not have grown up with the original, and they're not really doing a very good job with either. Another confusing aspect about this game is Al was apparently able to suck a lot of people from the real world into this basketball game, mostly as spectators, and the commentary team is... Ernie Johnson and Lil Rel Howery. I guess Ernie Johnson was the only actual basketball commentator that needed the paycheck? I mean, I like Lil Rel, but j just why? Another confusing aspect about this game was the hip-hop battle that spontaneously broke out in the third quarter. Why? That is a question I keep asking about so many aspects of this movie. Just why? Now, to be fair, not everything about this movie was bad. Uh, Don Cheadle, bless him, he is giving it his all. It did not save the movie, but he tried. There is actually a funny moment when Sylvester says he's found Michael Jordan, and it turns out to be Michael B. Jordan. Okay, I'll give him a point for that one. And there are surprisingly few moments with the Looney Tunes that actually resemble their classic style of humor, but the ones they do have are very well done. There's a moment during the game where Wile E. Coyote makes this basketball duplicating machine and just starts launching hundreds of balls at the hoop and racking up the points, and then he accidentally gets sucked into the machine and it duplicates him, and he's like, oh god, what have I done? Like, I actually kind of like that. It's just a shame that those moments were so few and far between. There are moments of greatness in this movie, but you gotta wade through so much crap to get to them. So, overall, this is not a good movie. It's pretty bad, and... I really have a hard time recommending paying any money to see this in a theater. Maybe when it comes out on VOD and you need to keep your kids occupied for a couple of hours, okay, but I, it's not worth theater prices. It's too dumb for adults and it's too adult for kids. If you have HBO Max, I guess it won't cost you anything except two hours of your life, but there are probably better things on HBO Max that you could use to occupy those two hours. And that's all I have to say about Space Jam A New Legacy. Till next time, take care.